There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is chill. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior. And oh my goodness, I have got to finish doing this design behind me because I hate this. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad when I'm in the room, but then when I sit down and see the reflection of my of my video, I'm like, oh man, that, that shelf just looks ghastly. It's a work in progress, okay? In fact, I'm taking a little break from that work to do a special Patreon? <laughs> Patreon sponsored episode. Yes, my first five patrons of BJ, Millie, Jay, Zach, and Ammo, one of whom asked me to do a video on what Marvel Legend figure do I think is garbage that everyone else seems to like? And I was like, hmm, that's actually really difficult because even ones that I kind of hate, I can still see why others might like them. It's very tricky. So I cheated and put it out to the various Facebook groups. I said, guys, what are your controversial opinions? What are the opinions that would ruffle some feathers and upset the bourgeoisie who thumb their nose at your... I don't know where I was going with that. Anyway, these are the top however many controversial opinions about action figures. Coming in at number one, or reverse order, whatever, there's no order to this, cloth clothes. And this actually is mine. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna die on this hill. Cloth clothes, I don't like them. A lot of folks do. A lot of th folks think they add a lot of quality to, to the figures and, you know, uh, ones like Mezco and Hot Toys like, like that, like they look, think it looks really good. I don't, I disagree. I'm not gonna be here for ages trashing them because everyone is entitled to their own opinions. But I will say that most characters when put in cloth versions of their superhero costumes look like Adam West from the 60s Batman or they look like an, an action man or a G.I. Joe or just, you know, a doll and hey we're action figure collectors we don't collect dolls around these parts unless you do in which case live your best life but yeah cloth clothes i don't dig it and to be honest cloth capes not that much of a fan either just as soon as you put cloth on a plastic figure like the only exception where like there's a little hint of it that i kind of dig is the new retro style doom where he's just got the little cloth bit there because it doesn't stand out too much because the problem is the cloth is, you know, the cloth is, is made out of normal cloth material that you make human-sized clothes out of. But these aren't human-sized clothes. These are little miniature clothes. Therefore, this human-sized cloth does not ruffle and crumple and crease the way that it would do or should do at that scale. So the characters just look kind of like they're wearing their big brother's hand-me-downs. It just doesn't look quite right. I don't like it. And that's the hill I'm going to die on. My buddy Tanner tells me that ankle pivot is overrated and can often be loose and lead to falling figures. And that is definitely a controversial one, which I won't wax lyrical on for too long. Ankle pivot is a huge component of new figures, new sort of figure technology, the way that they can stand and pose more dynamically. I love ankle pivot because of that. But that being said, when you get a loose ankle pivot, loose ankle rocker, yeah, you better get a stand because that figure is going to do a domino effect and take out everything around it. D says some collectors have no damn patience at all. And the only reason a $20 figure is worth $90 online is because people can't be patient enough to just wait for a re-release or to find it with a better deal. So collectors ourselves drive up the prices by just being, well, impatient. Can I say impatient one more time? There'd be 46 patients in this effed up video. A little bit of this kit there. All right, partner. Keep on rolling, baby. You know what time it is. Wow, that was a tangent. Anyway, yes. So the controversial opinion is the reason why figures are so expensive is your fault. <laughs> According to D. Just be patient and eventually it's going to be re-released. And in fact, the Select Watcher is a perfect example of this. That guy's been going for about $200 on average on eBay. And now, finally, the gods have smiled on us after the dumpster fire of a year that we've had. Select have gone, you know what, human race? You need a mulligan on this one. I'm gonna re-release the Watcher for you. So I have ordered that bad boy right away from $200 to $27.99, I think. Now that shows patience paying off. Neil says, quite simply, I can't see the point of pop action figures. And you know what, Neil? 
I'm kind of willing to go with you on this one. I just, they're just, just, uh, and actually, I, I was about to come up with a reason to hate pop figures, and, I was, and then my brain went, every reason you're about to say could be said for Marvel Legends. I was like, there's just so many of them. They're, they're quite plastic and like blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, actually, no, it's just, you like the things you like and you don't like the things that you don't like. But to, to me, pop figures just feel so, so light and just like kind of, Plasticky, like they don't they, they don't weigh much. As Ron Swanson would say, they're like the cats of action figures. You know, any dog that weighs less than five pounds is a cat. And as we all know, cats are pointless. Same with pop vinyls. Aaron says that Mezco 112 figures sometimes look okay, but generally they are incredibly overpriced for what they are, and most of them kind of look like garbage. Remember folks, not my words, <laughs> the words of Aaron, and I leave all the last names off, even though it's public record on, on Facebook, but I don't want someone saying, hey dude, you called me out. I'm like, no, 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 no. You posted that online, it's now public record, but we're on first name terms, so it's fine. It could be any one of Aaron's, probably a Aaron Aronson though, most likely. Likely. I don't like that guy. But still, I kind of get that because Mezco, oh my goodness, I convinced myself just yesterday, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna buy that Mezco Wolverine. That Sentinel base is just gorgeous. I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna spend the 70 pounds. And then of course I go on to come with some cocktails. I'm, I'm like, 129? No! Sorry, Mezco, you all just priced yourselves out of the market there. James says articulation can sometimes be too much. And I totally get this. The main point being made is fingers. It's like, it's great to have all these different posing options, but also every articulation point does need a joint. It needs a hinge. It needs something. It's something extra to be hidden. And especially when you look back on some of the old Toy Biz figures, it's like, do we need these big bulky knuckles on characters just so we can move their fingers? Not so much. Except it's great when you have a figure going like, hey, too sweet me. All right, Ricky really puts the cat amongst the pigeons by saying, all Marvel Legends are just the same body repainted. And you know what? That's not entirely true. It's very true <laughs> about a lot of figures. That's a really tough one. Uh, yeah, not, obviously not all of them. I mean, there are some unique figures uh, occasionally. <laughs> Looking around my collection, oh shit, they're all just repaints. No, they're not, they're not. It's it's a sliding scale, you know. For, for every completely beautiful, new, original figure, you've got a repainted, you know, uh, Pizza Spider-Man or something. So it is a mix, but I do totally get it. If you break down a lot of different figures, you have like a set number of body types, and then they'll just swap the heads and accessories. I get it. But you know what? When they do it well, Oh, they do it so well. Felix says that plastic capes are the worst. I think he used the phrase like Happy Meal toys and I, I get it, you know what? I like plastic capes, I, I just do. Once they're, they're posed and on the shelf or in the cabinet, I think they look great, they look fine, but I also do get it, it's this like hard plastic, it, 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 it's not great. But if the alternative is having a cloth cape that I feel will just like not fit right and just like look look odd and look kind of like Mezco-ish, which I was saying before, or like Mego. I, I think being raised on a toy fair theater has kind of like warped my brain thinking like, no, no, that looks bad. I, there are some really good cloth uh, figures that, that someone did, did show me actually. There's a Hugh Jackman Wolverine, which looked really good. There was a blade, which looked really good. I get it, I get it, but on the whole, I like my plastic capes, especially if you have flight stands, because I know that another problem is plastic capes can limit sort of the poses you can put characters in because they will touch the floor before the feet do, and you're like, well, that just rules out that idea. But my Moon Knight, for example, Moon Knight was one that a lot of people cited. They were like, I love that Moon Knight figure right up until the cape, and I don't mind the cape because I've got Moon Knight in a flight stand, so the cape's kind of like, you know, hanging down and it's not touching the ground, his feet are like extended, he looks badass, but yeah, for this point, I get it. Sam says, I hate removable helmets on figures. And I actually kind of sort of see that. I can't think of any examples myself just like 
off the top of my head, but I, it's like, it, it's almost like a Mandela thing. Like, like I know that it's true, I just can't think of it, but very often for a character to have a removable helmet, the head kind of needs to be smaller to accommodate it. It doesn't look right. And actually, I remember now why I can think of a main example, because my brain is programmed to Marvel Legends, and he, do, he does mention it's more Star Wars Black Series, and that's something that is more of an uh, anomaly there, and I don't collect Black Series much, so I can't really comment, but, I totally get it. I gave a counterpoint of one Marvel legend that I think does it really well is the Rider Punisher with his uh, Norse kind of helmet. But in fairness also, that kind of works because that helmet is supposed to be like a Norse god's helmet. Therefore, it's supposed to be too big on him. It's supposed to look a little bit too big, which by the figure allows the figure's head to then fit inside. So it's a lucky sort of accident that that works really well. But then, then there, there are figures like, especially I was given out ages go about the original Marvel Legends Nova figure that his head is too tiny and it's like yeah I hate that and that's not even a removable helmet but like you imagine like wait a minute if he took that helmet off his head would be like this he looked like Beaker from the Muppets yeah yeah helmets can cause problems now Kalen or Callan Kalen goes off the reservation as far as Marvel Legends are concerned and goes over to McFarlane Toys and basically says McFarlane Toys are incredibly lazy, nay money grubbing with their repainted variants. And you know what? <laughs> They're bang to rights on this one. I can't, there, there's no argument to be had. Oh my goodness, the amount of Mortal Kombat repaints that they're releasing, it's like, why? I mean, I guess people people must buy them and, you know, like, more power to you, but I don't get it. Because it's just, like, sub, like, Sub-Zero, like sub but purple or green? Like, why do you want a purple or green Sub-Zero? <laughs> Sub-Zero is blue! He's blue! It's the whole point! But I, I, I guess, like, they wouldn't make them if people didn't buy them. So, that's fair enough. I'm sure people, like, look at my collection and, you know, and they're like, dude, why? I don't get it. And that's my answer, because you never will. So there's obviously a market for repaints, but my goodness, they, <laughs> McFarlane are cranking them out at the speed of knots, and it is a bit crazy. Aiden says, anything Clone Saga sucks. Why? Why are you, why are you gonna play me like that, Aiden? What are you, what are you trying to do? You trying to break my heart? You trying to hurt me? Because you are. Well done. Hold on, you cut me deep there. Cut me real deep. Austin says, I hate screaming heads on figures. Just give me a stoic expression and my imagination will do the rest. And that's kind of a tough one, actually. I, I wish, like, perfect world, every figure would come with a neutral head and a grrr kind of head. Because you never know how you want to display them. Like, sometimes I want to put my figures in just like a classic sort of like team kind of school photo type thing, and that's where the stoic head looks really, really great. But occasionally, if you want to have like an action scene, something dynamic, then when you've got characters like... It's like, wow, that the heat of battle, ladies and gentlemen. It looks really bad. So I wish we had the option. You know, don't don't give us, I mean, God, like, you know, perfect world. Don't give us baths. Just let us buy characters individually and then give us a head swap instead. But I know that that's not going to sell an entire wave. So I get it. That's a debate that's not even worth debating. We know why baths exist. So, yeah, alternate heads would be amazing. And it, and it does disappoint me that, like, it's really rare to have that alternative. It, and when it does happen, it's like, oh, so good to see. <laughs> Drew says, figure arts. Okay, so funny story. When I was saying SH figure arts, my brain was thinking of amazing Yamaguchi figures. So I got completely the wrong end of the stick. So what I'm saying is applying to amazing Yamaguchi figures, which I actually like. And so did the person because they were talking about SH figure arts, which aren't applicable to what I'm saying. So this whole next point is kind of pointless, but I'm gonna include it anyway, cause I'm just like that. Yeah, I'm just like that. 93 points of articulation don't mean a thing when your figure looks ugly AF. And wow, excuse me while I sheepishly hide my Iron Spider pre-order. That's an interesting one. Figure arts, I think, is purely down to personal taste and preference because they are highly stylized, I feel. They're, they're not designed to be uh, sort of, they're designed to be their, their own design based obviously 
on the comic material, which, which is great, but then just done in a figure arts kind of style. And that's where it really is up to you and your tastes and whatnot. I bought my Iron Spider or pre-ordered my Iron Spider because it is the closest to a comic Iron Spider that we seem to be getting anytime soon. And I think it looks really cool. And the very angular kind of joints work for that figure because it is a sort of metallic kind of almost sort of robotic kind of suit. So that works really well. But yeah, with the other sort of designs or more complex things, it's down to personal preference. And you know what? You can love them, you can hate them, you can do whatever you want with them. That's your prerogative because we live in a free world, baby. Leanne says that her pet hate is trigger finger hands on figures that don't even have guns, but they seem to have trigger fingers. And again, this was, was directed more towards Star Wars Black series, so I can't comment directly, but even I can see this as well. There are, there are other figures, which again, top of my head, like looking around my collection, I can't see a single one, so clearly I'm just full of BS. <laughs> but I'm sure that I've seen figures before where I'm like, why, why you got this going on? You're not, you're not holding a gun. What are you, what are you doing? Why is, why is this here? But it is what it is. So I totally get that. And apparently Star Wars Black Series are, are bad for that. They'll have characters ready to fire a gun that, that aren't holding guns. So honestly, if that's the case, that ain't even a controversial opinion. That's just an annoying thing. So I'll sign off on that one. And folks, with very little pomp and circumstance, that was the end of the controversial opinions list. I'm kind of happy to see that there wasn't like an insane amount. Yeah, there seems to be some, some uniformity within the collector community, which is all kind of nice. Uh, funnily enough, no one gave the opinion of, I think baths are a great idea, and I'm glad that I'm coerced into buying figures that I really don't want. There was a big debate I was reading recently where someone was like, oh, Hasbro are duping us into buying figures. And someone was like, well, actually, dude, it's not, it's not really duping. You're not being tricked. <laughs> You know, but that's another debate for another time. Actually, that's not a debate either. They're not duping us. They're just putting in a position where we're like, ah, damn it. All right, fine. I'll buy the holographic Iron Man. At least I found someone to sell my Shang-Chi MCU figures to so I can get the Mr. Hyde bath without paying something insane, which is great. And folks, before I start rambling anymore, that was my top controversial list. No, top list of controversial opinions, which may in itself be quite controversial. I don't know. If you don't enjoy these lists, then don't worry, because we're going to get back to the shelf building in the next episode but folks thanks very much for watching if you did enjoy this then click the like and subscribe button and if you really liked what you see then you can become the sixth patreon member that's how we do numbers in in japan it's like five six seven eight it re reminds me of that scene from inglorious bastards where the guy holds up three fingers and everyone's like oh he's not german because germans do fingers like this not like this or they do fingers like this not like this either way he gave himself away I love funny little cultural things. Anyway, I digress. Join the Patreon. Be the sixth member. Live your best life. That's what it's all about. And folks, until next time, keep displaying model behavior. Cheers.